Hello and welcome to this online service of worship for the benefits of St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. I'm Philip Hawthorne, the Rector, and it's great to welcome you, our online community, to this service, wherever you're watching this and whenever you're watching it. It doesn't matter. We're, we may be separate in, in space and time, but God brings us together by the Spirit to worship as a community. And we together will worship God with uh, some readings and some thoughts and some prayer together. Hope you've had a good week. Um, as you can see, I've still got my crutches. Uh, I had my foot operation five weeks ago. So next week, when I record the online service next week, I will have seen the consultant and I'll know a bit more about my progress. I hope she'll be so pleased with my healing that I, and the way I've looked after my feet in the last five weeks that she'll say, throw away your crutches and uh, walk. Uh, that'll be great. Um, that's what I'm hoping anyway, but we'll, we'll see. I've got to have a wire out for one of my toes. Ooh but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, thank you again for all your prayer, uh, for your messages and for those who brought me food and meals. It's been wonderful. I'm um, getting slightly frustrated at having the crutches and not being able to carry anything, but I've been well looked after. So uh, it's been a really interesting lesson actually in asking for things. I'm not very good at that. And I've I had to learn to rely on people and, and it's been brilliant and people have been amazing. So good to be with you. We gather in the name of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our abiding spirit. Amen. So I don't know how you've come to watch this video, but we're just going to take a bit of space, just a quietening time to allow our souls to settle and our hearts to be receptive. And then we're going to say that prayer that we say before uh, a communion, a Eucharist service. So we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I should have said that that prayer is in the uh, description of the video, which you may be, like to go back and read it again. I would get up and start recording again, but I've, <laughs> this is the third time I've started it. And it's just an effort to, to stand up um, and do all the adjusting on the on the on my phone. So I hope that's hope you'll understand. That's OK. So we've got readings. This first reading is from Tuesday's set of readings, which was the Feast of the Transfiguration. And it's from 2 Peter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honour and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And this reading from this Sunday, which is the 11th Sunday of Trinity season. And it's from John 6, Jesus continuing his teaching on being the bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know? How can he now say I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. 
I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So as you can appreciate, uh, after over the last few weeks, I've had quite a lot more visitors than usual. And each one, whether bringing paracetamol or food or shopping, has also brought with them kindness. One of the most surprising conversations I had was with a couple who I'm marrying on Monday. And we talked about the wedding ceremony and we were chatting about their life interests when suddenly Amy uh, looked at the bookshelf, which is just behind where you're viewing me from now, and uh, exclaimed in a, in a loud voice, oh, you've got the Ken Forkish book. She meant this, which is my second Bible. I love it. It's my favourite bread book, flour, water, salt, yeast. A reminder that those are the basic ingredients for bread. Pure and simple, essential. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So this is the second of four Sundays on which we hear about Jesus' deepest, I think, and tastiest metaphor. Debbie touched on it last week, and I want to look at one particular aspect of it, and that is the simplicity of those four ingredients, particularly the yeast. So I brought along a friend of mine called Balthazar. He's nearly 12 and has been a wonderful part of my life. Here he is. This is Balthazar, as you can see there. And I'm going to take the lid off and, oh, oh, that smells amazing. You, don't, you can see in there that, oh, beautiful, beautiful smells. With, um, it's a sourdough culture. Oh, and um, I don't know if you know, but uh, once, you've, once he's up and running and you feed him, um, oh, then after about 12 hours, you get this wonderful sort of lactic acid smell. Uh, and then towards the end, or maybe after 24 hours, it's, it's slightly more acidic and sour. And that's where you get the word sourdough from, because it comes from the end of the fermentation process. But right in the middle of it, you get this much, much sweeter uh, um, flavour, which is absolutely delicious. And I started Balthazar 12 years ago uh, in October. So I feed him by just keeping a certain amount of him, uh, throwing the rest away if I haven't used it, uh, and then add equal parts of water and flour to the same degree as the uh, same measurement as the weight of, of sourdough and stir it up and leave, leave him. And then in the waiting, Balthazar captures the spores of yeast that are in the air and comes alive again. And actually, that, uh, that's probably double the size he was, uh, but he has been three or four times the size before he started to go down again. And the yeast, this yeast, will give the dough what it needs to rise, and it will give the airiness and the flavour that we look for and love in bread. And as a bonus, sourdough, sourdough is also good for people with gluten intolerance as well. So the first reading we had from the Transfiguration of Jesus, which is one of my favourite festivals, Jesus suddenly grows, glows and radiates his divinity, showing that he is both human and God. It's like he becomes leavened with his divine nature. And that reading we heard, which is taken from that day, says, For we did not follow carefully devised myths. And when I read that, the first line of the reading, I immediately thought, as you may well have done, about the events of this week. And how that unutterably tragic event in Southport a week ago 
resulted in the unutterable shame and disgrace of racist and xenophobic riots full of anger and hatred. For carefully devised myths read misinformation. We all know what that misinformation was, that the wicked perpetrator of the appalling knife attack was a Muslim refugee. And this, in some people's minds, triggered their anger and hatred. A spore of evil that fermented in them, driving them to do what they're doing, with the help, of course, of social media. I am the bread of life, says Jesus. And we, made in his image, seeking to be like him, are bread also. We can own his metaphor. We are made from the pure essence of the goodness of God. But like Balthazar, we are also open to capturing the unseen and allowing that to ferment in us, either for evil or for good. You may have heard the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, being interviewed on the Today programme this week, being asked where God was in all the destruction and all the horror show that we've had in this country. And he said that God was there in the comfort of community, for the families of the murdered girls, in the thankfulness and support for police officers and the victims of the hate crimes, in the, care, in the caring and help for those with ruined businesses and homes. I found this as an affirmation that the amount of good far exceeds the amount of evil. Because in most people, the spores of good and of community and of compassion were the yeast that is working in their hearts and minds and actions, right through to the peaceful presence of the thousands of people who turned out to protest against the right-wing hatred and violence. I am the bread of life. In sermons, we seek to reflect on God's goodness. Most often, this means we look and listen to Jesus in the form of story or parable or metaphor. God's presence in the world, a mustard seed, a hidden treasure, a costly pearl. And the words of Jesus are spores, which we pray will become part of us, to feed us, to ferment us, and to come alive in us, so that we might be also the bread of the world. And the means by which we do this is the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. And it's in our prayer and our worship that is our intentional interior space for the Spirit to leaven us. Celtic thought holds that God is that which is planted deepest in us and that this is the blessing by which all things were made, all people are made with the divine seed of the creator. And for me it's this which shows that faith is far from being merely a duty or a crutch for the weak but rather has the potential to be a power for good, which feeds the world. When we live as the bread of life, 
the spores of the spirit are released into what we do and who we are. We become part of the world's healing. We become Christ-like, transfiguring our lives and the world from the very deepest place in us, resonating with that deepest place in others. The riots, as well, of, as well as lots of other terrible things in the world, show that people act, however, from different places within them. And often those places are far from Christ-like. These are things that are in all of us, that life deposits in us, whether we like it or not. Things that obscure and inhibit that divine spark in us. The bits of us that are bruised or shadowed. Things there can fester, such as racism and sexism, murder, cruelty, unfaithfulness, anger, unkindness, selfishness, greed, lust for power or for sex. These are things that cause someone to see a Muslim family, even if British, as an object of hate or fear or resentment and allow these thoughts to develop into actions with consequences that we've seen every day this week. And there are places in all of us that cause us to ferment things that are unchristlike. They may not drive us to murder or violence, but they can be our regrets or our resentments, our failures, the injustices we've suffered, our feeling of being victims. And what gives us hope is the reminder that we are Easter people. I had a really interesting chat with one of my visitors this week about what the cross and the resurrection really mean. And she reminded me that the Bible has at least five models for what happens on the cross and what that means for us. I like the Celtic thought that says that God brings us into existence with all the kindness and affection of heaven, that's which planted deepest in us. And that this gets distorted by our lives and experiences. And that Christ at Easter comes to renew that blessing, to heal that blessing. In his death, he became buried in the core of the earth, in the deepest part of what it is to be human. And in his death and by his death, God is able to weave, ferment a new life in him so that in his resurrection he can show that this is no less true, no less a hope for us. Christ came to save us not from our sinful nature but rather to connect us reconnect us to our divine nature. So not to save us from a sinful nature, but to reconnect us to our divine nature. And that's what's in the light and the love of the transfiguration, restoring the truth of the sacredness of our being. So our worship and our prayer are the Balthazar, the sourdough by which God comes to us and invites us to be open to the work of the Spirit, to ferment and to come alive in us so that our lives become the texture and the taste of God's goodness. This is food not just for our own souls, but for the world. 
that breathes the possibility that the pain and the agony of communities will give rise to the love and kindness of communities. Not that we want the agony, but the goodness shows that in spite of the hatred, the truth of the resurrection is there. Christ is manifest and comes to life over and over again. So may God make you, make all of us, receptive to the resurrection goodness alive in our world. May we open our lives to the Spirit's life and love, to be the living and loving embodiment of hope, that light shining in the darkness. May we become more like the bread of life, Christ himself, transfiguring us, our churches, our communities and the world. Amen. I love this affirmation again it's written in the description you can either join in with that or just listen to the words and echo them with the whole church we affirm that we are made in God's image befriended by Christ empowered by the Spirit with people everywhere we affirm God's goodness at the heart of our humanity planted more deeply than all that is wrong with all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Before we pray, I'm just going to send you, uh, sorry, I'm going to read you two things that I was sent this week, which they're not more sermons, but they're real thoughts of people, real things that I think support what we were reflecting on. Dear Reverend Philip, peace be upon you and your beautiful communities. On behalf of the Bath Muslim community, I extend our heartfelt gratitude for the unwavering support you have shown us in these challenging times. Christianity and Islam both emphasize love support and standing up for one another in times of need. Your outreach has deeply resonated with these principles and we look forward to continuing to work together to build a community where everyone feels safe, respected and values. Thank you once again for your church's incredible support and friendship. With sincere gratitude, Dr. Mohammed Gamal Abdul Noor, Imam of Bath Mosque. I love, love that. And this is a quotation that was sent after our meditation on Thursday evening, and it's by the novelist L. R. Nost. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bringers, those extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who weave quietly threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with himself. They are the whisperers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame and then go. Build bridges, hold hands, bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible and it begins with us. Let's pray together. We praise God with our thanks for all that is good, beautiful and true. We hold before God our dear ones in every place where they are.
we plead with God for the life of our good earth and the people and places suffering cruelty, conflict and fear. We all hear the news, we know the places. Just hold them quietly now. We offer to God our church, our life, our relationships and our mission. And we offer to God all places and communities of faith, especially remembering the, our sisters and brothers at Bath Mosque. And we bring to God those needing our prayer. A moment of quiet for you to remember those who you know are sick or ill or anxious or lonely. benefits we pray for Bob, Carlton Porter, for Caroline Kay, for Rosalind Marshall. Elizabeth Moore, for Tory Peters and Simon. We remember those who have communion at home, Brian and Bridget, Mary Young, Paul and Caroline Chaudois, Simon Marshall. Pray for Debbie, who's not feeling too well at the moment. For my family at this time, for Andrews too. And we pray for those who have died recently, especially remembering Mike Clare. Pray for Pete and all his family and friends. And we remember Pearl Slee and her family. Chance for you to remember those you know who are mourning or who have died. Pray for Philip Fossil too. So we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. looking for a blessing that I thought I'd put in here. Oh yeah, I've got it. Great. Have a really good week. Um, keep praying, keep hoping and uh, hold on to that image of an old Balthazar. Just be open to God's spirit leavening you. So friends, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Abiding Spirit be with you and remain with you and all you love, pray for and remember in this holy moment. 
for always. Amen. Bless you.